So you put together a great drive, you get down to the low red zone or goal line, and you have to call a play. What do you do now? Coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterback's coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. As many of you know, and I've mentioned here before, I have about 5,000 starting professional snaps. And one of the things that is true, no matter what level, what brand, what type of football you play, is when you get down into the low red zone or near the goal line, it gets really difficult to complete passes. If your team is a team that struggles in that area, don't feel bad because it's common. You have to have packages that you can use down there that create stretches in the pass game. Now, if you're a great front seven team, if you have tough backs and a great offensive line, run the football. I mean, run the football. That's what you got to do. Run it, get in. But if the defense is equally matched or overmatched to what you can do inside and you use the passing game to move the ball down the field, now you have to have passing options. Today, we're going to talk about a couple of them. I'm going to show you play from my Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook um, that still holds true. This play still holds true today. And we're going to show you some modern offense out of uh, base personnel, kind of your normal personnel, not heavy tight ends, extra backs, the whole nine yards. So if you're a team that is a spread type team, four wides, and you'd like to stay in that set and get that personnel match, we're going to have a play for you today. Don't forget, if you haven't done it, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell, give me a thumbs up if you want to learn how to score down in the red zone. And as always, love your comments. Please leave comments down below. Now let's take a look at a couple of low red zone concepts that I think can help you out. So almost every football team in America has this play or some form of this play, but it is essentially a corner with a rub and a flat. In this case, it's going to be a delay flat because you're trying to push any coverage high with this corner route and you're trying to pick any backer coming out. And so this vertical action should try to get these guys' eyes in the wrong place so you can hit the flat. You can do it with a running back like this off of play action. You can do it, you could do it by releasing vertically here, running the tight end on a slam flat and the fullback in the flat like we're gonna see in just a second. But some version of play action where you try to hold the backers inside with run action, boom, hold them inside and then get vertical to the corner and then to the flat, every team in America should have this play. It's a great play. This is from my 1992 Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook. So the corner and the delay flat are incredibly effective. And now let's take a look at it on film so you can see what I'm talking about. So I showed it to you out of my Tampa Bay Buccaneers playbook as the halfback or the tailback going to the flat with the tight end getting vertical. And so it would look like that, getting the rub in here and the halfback in the flat. In this case, now that you have two lined up wide to the left, and you have three tight ends actually in the game to that side, what you're going to get is the corner with the delay flat. And so you're going to get a slam by the tight end. You're going to get your vertical corner route with a little rub in here. And that corner route is designed as the first one to hit your eyes to get that corner to fall in on it, the, the widest defensive player to fall in on it. And then after the slam, tight end is going to hit the flat. And so you're leveraging this player by putting two into the flat. Again, this is an old school play. Every team in America should have some version of it. It's still incredibly effective. You can see it here, slam, flat, corner over the top. You out leverage the top guy and you get yourself in the end zone. Now you see it from the end zone with the corner outside here waiting on leverage. You're going to see slam with this tight end releasing vertically. When this corner, and he's gonna run the corner out. When the corner who's out here just off the screen sees this vertical release and the block down, he jumps the corner. That's where his eyes are gonna go. There's no other threat to him. So he's gonna to jump to that tight end. Then after the slam, you pivot and release to that flat, and you're leveraging one player with two, making him make a quick read in terms of who he has to cover in the flat. See the corner jump that corner route? 
And they're trying to chase the flat from inside out with the safety. And so you get leverage the way you design that play by who presents first. High low on the corner is a great opportunity when you're in the low red zone on the goal line. It's fantastic. If you don't have it, you should have it. You don't have to run it from all those tight ends, from that type of personnel. But you should have some version of that slam flat with the corner over the top to try to leverage a single flat defender. Now, what if teams start playing at combo? Or what if you feel like you don't match up inside, that they're not going to bite on run? Well, then you go with your base personnel in terms of four wides, your spread look, and you run some bunch sets. Let's take a look at that. Well, now you've got bunch. You can see three receivers up top here, single tight end down, single back in the game. Oregon matches this bunch look to this side by playing inside, outside, and over the top. Most teams are going to play some kind of combo to bunch. Sometimes they'll press the point, but if you, if you do a compressed bunch like this and you press the point, now you can block down and you get second level blocking, so you create an extra gap which is a problem for defenses. Let's talk about what they're doing on defense in order to accommodate this. They're going to play outside. He's going to play vertical route, whoever gets vertical, and he's going to take whatever comes inside. And so as you run vertical in this set, you're going to see a vertical push here. And this Safety is going to take that vertical over top. Now, he's going to overplay to the outside because he knows he has safety help inside. So if this vertical route bends in, he knows he's got that covered. Then this corner, as we discussed, is going to try to play underneath the corner route and be able to come up and tackle the flat. And so his responsibility is to keep anything thrown underneath him from getting into the end zone by tackling outside. This backer or nickel in this case is going to tackle or is going to work on anything that comes shallow. Crossing his face, try to wall that off, keep anything from going in the middle right now. Because if you were to get in the middle right now, then you could expose corner flat. So he's got to wall that. So these guys have their assignments in terms of what they're supposed to cover in that combo coverage. What Cal is going to run here a vertical push through with a rub right here and an over. You're going to get number two on that corner route to the outside, which is always kind of a part of this offense. And you're going to get number three on the shoot route, which means this corner will have to come up and tackle. But the beauty of this and what I love is that once they hit the flat, they're going to run a whip off of it and bring him back inside. So what that does is as this corner widens, he's waiting to tackle anything underneath, remember? And this safety is playing outside leverage to stop that corner. Now that creates a gap that when number one, excuse me, in this case, comes out and runs his shoot whip, it leaves an empty gap inside because you've already cleared this inside defender by going vertical and pushing over the top. And so... Creating, having that corner with the flat or the shoot route as an option. So the corner shoot as an option means these guys have to expand. But then when you take away the inside coverage and you bring the whip back underneath, it hits that open gap inside. And so Oregon does a great job of rushing the passer here. You'll see it. And so the quarterback has to step up in a hurry. But if you're on time, you can get this ball to that whip. If you can step up without that kind of pass rush, and that is Kayvon Thibodeau, who's an absolute beast. But if you step up on time, you've got that whip route right in the gap. There's nobody around it. We'll freeze it right here. And there's nobody around if you can get him the ball right now to get up vertical. Now, eventually, Chase Garbers gets back to him and gets him that ball on the toss, but if you can get him that ball on time, that is a fantastic option because teams are going to press out and look for that corner flat combo. I also like on the backside that you're getting a, a pick rub on the whip here. This guy is going to expand to the corner 
and you're getting a wide by the back. And so what that means is as the back gets wide, whoever has flat is going to chase wide and you leave one-on-one -on -one inside, backside with a tight end running that whip route. So you have two whip routes coming back in and it's a really nice play, really nice design. A quarterback can kind of pick his side where he wants to go with this ball. One more look, I'll let you see it. If you can get the ball to either one of those rip, whip routes on time, you've got a walk-in touchdown, or at least a guy can get a shoulder down and score. So you can see in the low red zone or near the goal line, if you have a couple of package plays together, that corner slam flat or corner flat, uh, you can run snag at a bunch down there. So now you have a shoot to the flat with a corner over the top. Some kind of stretch that gets you to the outside on a high-low on that corner, and then a stretch that comes back inside to that vacated spot inside. And you could literally just run snag and snag whip and have that same type of stretch on the corner in the flat. And it gives you a package down there where if they're comboing you out, you are in good shape. So a couple low red zone thoughts for you to put in your playbook. Minor adjustments to make them work no matter what the defense does. And having those kind of plays ready to go on the goal line, practiced, repped, so that you run them perf perfectly, is the way to go when you get down there. So you don't feel stressed about what you're going to call. You have options. And when you're down in the red zone, it gets stressful. Having options and having the ability to call those options is key. Don't forget, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell, thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. Would love to hear from you. Just wanted to bring you some red zone, goal line, low red zone stuff so that you have more plays in your arsenal without getting too thick and making too big a playbook. Give you something that you can call in the low red zone or on the goal line that'll help you score points.